Hello and welcome to our second video in our little series. In this one we'll look at some of the basic functions or the measures of location and dispersion. So we've looked at the measures of location or what's commonly known as mean medium mode and range and also the measures of dispersion which we generally call standard deviation. If I want to carry out those four functions on this set of numbers, I have a set of 10 numbers and you could do it by hand. But if I 100,000 numbers, I might want to do it by hand. I might, I, uh, that's what Excel's there for, really, is for these larger sets of numbers to put those together. So if I want to do that, I'm going to use a function. Now, I can't go to insert function, and I'm going to say I want the average. I haven't even tried that before, but why not? Why do I not just go for the mean? Ah, it doesn't give me what I want. So... Sometimes the insert function button isn't quite right, and as part of um, as part of the, one of the things that you should really just learn what the functions are, at least have a note of them beside you for when you come to do any kind of Excel work or otherwise. If we want to do the mean calculation, we don't want to do Z test. It's it's something different. Uh, if you go on the study um, statistics at a degree level or otherwise, or do a Psychologists use it a lot um, for sampling and surveys. Uh, you come to do Z tests, so it's not what we want to do here. Okay, we want the average or the classical average, which we in maths call the the mean. But we're going to go to average, and it's done exactly the same as beforehand. We tell it what array we want. We tell it what box we want to draw around. In this case, A two D L A eleven has been picked. Fine. We're going to pop that in. And rather unsurprisingly, we found out in the last video that all these values total to 619. So when we divide that by 10, because there are 10 values, we'll get 61.9. And I'm going to label that at the side as the mean. Next, we'll do the median. And the median, as a function, I'll type this one out, because they're all used exactly the same way, is equals median returns the median or the number in the middle of the set of the given numbers. If I double click on median, I can again drag my array around, so A2 to A11, close my brackets and get the function returned for 58. If I want to get the mode, rather unsurprisingly, the mode is equals mode. Now there are a couple that say mode dot mult mode dot single, and it also has mode at the bottom, which will tell you is out of date, um, with earlier versions of Excel. To uncomplicate things, I'm going to suggest that you use this one here. So it's the mode of all of these, and you'll see just by eyeballing the data that I should get 51 returned as my answer. I've got 51 down twice in here, and sure enough, mode. Is done like that. Now range. Range is a little bit different. So I'm going to range of a set of data. Right. It says binomial distance range returns the probability of a trial result using a binomial distribution. Well that's not what we want. Hmm. So that won't work. So one of the easier ways to do it is to, rather than say, look for the biggest number, look for the smallest number, and find me the difference between the two of them, which is what the range is. I'm going to have to help it along the way. I'm going to have to kind of tell it, right, here's the biggest number, and here's the smallest number. And the functions for doing that are called max and min. So I'll do max Select me array, close my brackets, and I'll do min. Select me array, close my brackets. It has quite rightly picked out, I can see by eyeball, that the biggest number will be 98, the smallest number will be 40, and I'll do the difference between those two. To calculate the range, we'll just do this number, take away this number, just using simple mathematical rules. So we can do add and subtract and multiply and divide and just fine by selecting the cells and using those numbers. And that'll give me my range to be equal to 58. That's the measures of location done. 
we just want to do the measures of dispersion which is standard deviation and again I can go to insert function and type standard deviation and you'll see that it comes up with a number of options here so the first one that comes up is an ST dev and it says the function isn't compatible with Excel 2007 or earlier and you can use that one but the one that I'm going to ask you to use um, is either the dot s or the dot p and the dot s means if I want to find the standard deviation out of a sample and the dot p is the standard deviation of a population and the difference of those two you might remember is when we have a set of data from a larger set which is a sample or if we have all the data which is a population and in this case we have all of the data we have 10 results here of something so we're going to use stdev.p now I think it's going to help us again by before by selecting all of the numbers that come before it a 2 da 17 but as we've already realized we don't want all of those we want a2 to a11 just and if I do that it tells me the standard deviation is going to come out as 19.11256131 etc now that is a little bit cumbersome and you probably can round it yourself if you're writing out a report or you're putting in afterwards but if I want to round that in place in fact if I want to limit all of these values to say one decimal place because that's all that the mean comes out as I'll select them all and I'll right click and when you right click in any of the Microsoft applications it gives you options left click does an action right click gives you options if you go down to format sales down here four from the bottom and click on it I'll be able to see that it gives me some options so for alignment for font border etc and you can certainly change all those things if you want but I want to go to number here and if I click on number it gives me an option to limit the number of decimal places so I'm gonna tell it I just want to go to one decimal place and there you go it will force all of those to go to one decimal place which is fine if I just wanted to do that for one cell like down here I could just go to the format cell and change it to be one decimal place and it will just change that one it's up to yourself how you want to represent that data at all if you are worried about losing the original set of data you're not because the original function will be there and it will be quite obvious um, that you use the function and that maybe it's a rounded value at that stage you can even put it up beside it if you want that leaves us with one other thing to do if I've got a set of data and I want to show that I used formulas for it or I need to show evidence that I've used a function for it the numbers don't really see it I can only see it if I click on each individual function that I've used or formula so I might want to use a way to say look can I show you that that I've actually done this work a and you can if you go to formulas up the top here fourth along the top lots of buttons along here and you might need to stretch it out otherwise but I've got one here that says show formulas as you can see it says it has a keyboard shortcut CTRL and the wee apostrophe up at the top left it's the one beside the one usually you can hit that and if I click show formulas there you'll see that rather than displaying the result of the function of the formula it'll give me just the function that I used that I typed in and it's quite easy to see whether I did that in fact correct